Hello everyone, and welcome to a new playthrough I'm doing. This is Metal Slug for the arcade, as you can see. I've been playing this a lot lately. Uh, I actually really loved this game as a kid. When I was little, I have great memories playing it at the arcade. But uh, I also got it on the Wii for the when they came out the Metal Slug Anthology, and it was great. My only complaint with this game is, uh, it's really freaking hard to not die. Unless you play it a lot, and kind of master knowing where everything is, and also just understanding the controls better. And I've been playing it a lot recently, because it's a really fun game that I can just kind of play whenever in short bursts, and I've gotten to the point where I can get through most of the levels without dying pretty reliably. So... We're just gonna... we're just gonna start going through this, and this is going to be a no-death run. So, I might keep track of my deaths, I might not, but... Uh, each part is going to be probably just a couple of missions, and hopefully I won't die. So, let's see how this goes. And this is being played on Arcade Emulator, so... It's not being played on Steam, which is why it has all the, like, arcade -y stuff, like the opening. Here we are on mission one. Good old fashioned mission one. Brings back memories. Now, there's... I'm not really sure which Metal Slug is my favorite. I used to think X was my favorite, but I recently kind of felt like the first one's actually my favorite after playing it a lot. Part of the reason is just because it's probably the easiest in the series, at least of the ones that I've played. But also it has a lot of, like, neat things that the ones later on don't have. Uh, for example, you can do a short hop, which I really like. I don't know why they got rid of the short hop ability. It's either because they felt like it was too good of an option, and it kind of gave you a lot of ways to get out of, like, scary situations, or they just felt like it was something that no one really knew about. I'm not totally sure. Because it's not really explained. They never, like, talk about it in the controls. So it could just be that they were worried that people would accidentally, like, do a short hop when they mean to do a full hop and die or something. Not super sure. And... Hopefully... Ugh, my main concern is that I'll get hit because I'm trying to do commentary at the same time. And it's very hard to focus while talking, especially on a game like this. But I will do my best. Alright, got a Metal Slug. At least when I have a Metal Slug, I feel much more secure. Because Metal Slug vehicle can take three hits before it's destroyed. I'm probably just going to tank this hit because there's a gas right there, so it doesn't actually matter. Get my health back. Yep. As you can see, I'm playing this on level 8 difficulty at the bottom, which is the hardest difficulty. That's what I've been practicing on anyway, so it's like, might as well play on that. And when you play this game a lot, you just kind of learn certain things that you weren't aware of when you played it, like, casually, for lack of a better word. Because, like, when you play with the intention of not getting hit ever, you start to, like, learn where all the pickups are and where you can, like, collect ammo and, uh, cannon ammunition. And when you don't die, you generally accumulate, like, a ridiculous amount of, uh, grenades and cannon ammo throughout the course of the mission. That was close. Oh, okay. First boss is mostly a pushover because it's just kind of like, this is the game. And, uh, as you can see, it didn't take very many hits. The other bosses take a lot more hits than that one. But, you know, it's the first level. It's kind of what you would expect. But, yeah, when you play it a lot, you learn where all the pickups are and which POWs are, like, the ones you really need. Of course, doing commentary, I might forget. But I will do my best. And here we are on level 2. This is probably my favorite level. Actually, I like I like all the levels, except for level 1. When I practice, I usually just skip level 1, because on emulator you can, like, skip 
levels. You can basically choose which level you want to start on. And level 1 is like such a pushover, it's really not something I need to practice. So I usually start on level 2 and play through the game from there. I love this. This guy just zaps himself. I love that. Again, just things you learn from playing it a lot. You learn like which guys you really need to watch out for. Now here, the Bazooka Veterans uh, Battalion Wars terminology coming out. The uh, enemies on the right side of the screen are really the ones you have to watch out for. And I didn't actually need to burn that guy, he'll just kill himself if I don't do anything. Also that gives me points, I don't know why. Whatever. I usually short hop at this part, Whoop. but some whoa. sometimes I like mess up and fall off when I'm trying to short hop and be cool, so I'm just gonna do full hops there. And then if I just grenade here, or just shoot rockets here. Okay, and then at this part, infamously, this is a part where you just get tons of rocket launcher ammo. Like, it just kind of gives it to you, which is why I'm avoiding that heavy machine gun there, because I would rather just keep collecting rocket launcher ammo. And the rocket launcher is a weapon that I'm kind of... I have mixed feelings on it, because you can only have two rockets out at the same time. So if you shoot two, you're just kind of stuck sitting there until one of them explodes. But you can also spam it if they, if you're in a situation where they will blow up rapidly. Like right here. I can just spam the heck out of it. Which is pretty cool. And then we get a shotgun. And the shotgun's probably the best weapon in the game, if I had to be honest. Because it goes through things, uh, hits multiple enemies, it does the most damage in the game, which will in a moment here just how much damage it can do and how quickly it can take down a boss. Alright, should be some bombs. Yep. And here is the mid-boss. Not the boss of the stage, just a boss before the actual boss. I'm gonna avoid that heavy machine gun because if I just do this, this guy dies very quickly. As you can see, it doesn't take a whole lot of shots. Now I'll pick it up though, so I can take down this guy right here. And I can do this, because normally there's a guy who rolls bombs there, so having the heavy machine gun allows you to just kind of preemptively kill him before he even shows up. All these guys have coins. Don't know why. They give like 10 points, so not even very much. Whoop, missed that one. Okay, moving right along. Gonna run these guys over. Get some ammo. There's some gas. Didn't need it. Okay, this boss is quite a step up from the first boss. I can usually get through it just fine, but it also depends on a few things. Oh, okay, here we go. These rockets can go in all sorts of different directions, and you just have to kind of react to it. Okay. The one that I usually get hit by is when it does like a loop. And then I jump too early because I think it's just going to come straight at me. So yeah, a little bit of uh, random stuff you have to watch out for. Good thing that I have a tank that can duck. <laughs> One of the things I love about this game is just the ridiculous vehicles. Like, especially the bosses, but also the vehicles that the player gets to use in these games. In the first game, you only use the Metal Slug. But even the Metal Slug's, like, ridiculous. Like, it can duck and jump. That's just silly. Alright. There is, uh, whoop, the main boss of the Rebel Army. Shows up quite early. As you saw, I just tanked that hit. That's because when you jump out of the Metal Slug, you have a few moments of intemp temporary invulnerability in which you can get hit by things. So, I use that a lot for, like, uh, if there's, like, a situation where I can't avoid getting hit. I'll just use my temporary invulnerability. Alright, now for... Oh, okay, that was close. For this part of the fight, uh, it's just going to be him shooting rockets. And I can use my grenades to basically block his shots. Like that. And since I have so many, I will absolutely be doing that. But also when I'm in a situation to shoot a, uh, a cannon shot, I can do that too to destroy his shots. If I time it right. I might get hit. Nope. 
Yeah, that boss doesn't take too much damage either, but it's it's still like a big step up from the first boss, so. Not too shabby, not too shabby. Alright, and I think I'll call that a part. I think two missions per episode should be fine. So I'll see you guys in mission three.